Information Systems in Context, Netflix. Now we're going to have a look at the Netflix system in the context of an information system here. So firstly, what is Netflix? Well, Netflix is an on-demand streaming service which allows users to search and watch videos on almost any of their own devices. So we're talking tablets, PCs, you know, your mobile phone. Okay, you can link a Netflix account to a, a whole variety of devices. Okay, and that's really one of the reasons we all love using Netflix. Users are required to use the Netflix app, so it's installed on one of these devices. Once the user selects what they wish to watch, the video and audio data are then streamed to the user's selected device almost instantly, and this occurs over the internet and pending their internet connection. Okay, so you can be almost anywhere, you log into Netflix, you look for the video you want to watch, and then obviously it streams it directly to you and you're watching it almost straight away. Netflix is a pioneer in the area of on-demand streaming services and it popularized the format for similar platforms to follow. Okay, so as mentioned before in previous videos, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, um, Stan, these have all been apps that have followed Netflix and uh, really helped the on-demand service to grow. You know, it's great to have multiple of these on-demand services because it gives you a greater selection and library of things to watch, okay? So now let's have a look at Netflix and we'll use the information systems in context diagram to provide an example of how it would operate. So here is the Netflix information system. And obviously it's bare at the moment, but we're gonna be adding to it. So we'll firstly look at the purpose of this system. And the purpose would be to provide a service to users which allows them to browse, select, and watch videos instantly through streaming the media over the internet directly to the user's own device. So a few key things there. The data is streamed over the internet and in streaming means it actually buffers it and loads the video as it is downloading to the device. And the second part is it is on the user's own device. So they've got a choice of what device they have to actually watch the movies on, giving them that freedom. So on this end, let's now look at the user. Okay, so who is the user of this system? Well, it's individuals who want to browse, select, and watch movies through their own devices. Okay, people who want to be have the freedom to choose what they want to watch and on what device they want to watch, okay, where they can actually select and then almost instantly start watching their movies. So what environment does this system exist within and what impacts on it? Now, there are many factors that we could look at here. So I'm just going to give a few here because this is an introduction of the example of the system. So we have the specific devices of users. Netflix would try to be compatible on as many devices as they can be. Okay, but they've got to try to predict what devices people are going to use. But obviously different devices have different requirements. And so that will impact on the system, whether the person is using an actual um, Samsung tablet, okay, or a, a Galaxy Note phone or on an Apple iMac computer. Okay it will run and will have to specify itself to work on that specific system. The bandwidth of local networks, the data is streamed over the internet and presented on the individual's device, but if the internet isn't working in certain areas, it has to control the buffer speed, the quality of the video image that's going to be appear on screen, or if the user can access the system at all. Okay, so the bandwidth will impact on the quality of video that comes through at the user's end. Weather conditions, as we know, when conditions are bad in heavy rain, okay, this can affect the Wi-Fi area within an area, okay, and so it may impact on the quality of video coming through. And finally, the location of the user when accessing the system. Okay, if I'm at home using my own Wi-Fi, okay, on my phone, I can watch the Netflix app quite easily. But if I go on a holiday down the coast and go into a bit more of a remote location, I might be able to receive a signal as well, okay? So these factors will all impact from the environment. And there's many more we could go into here. This is just an introduction. Okay, let's now go into the meat of all this, and that is the information processes. And as we know, it's our seven information processes, which we'll touch on all of them, okay, as an introduction. So the first one is collecting. Users will enter in text, or they'll enter, uh, which can come through the remote, okay, or it could come through keyboards, okay which allows them to actually type in their search criteria or go through the menus in the Netflix app to allow them to make their choices about what they want to watch. Okay, so they go through the menus and they're selecting movies, they're selecting genres, they're putting things on their favorites list, their ratings movies. That's all coming through keyboards, remotes, touch pens, pending the device that they are using. Next is the organization. Okay. This is all based on them going through the Netflix app and it, how things are arranged for the movies as we can go through the menus and actually go into genres and we can see lists that we can select from in order to browse movies and then eventually select movies. Okay, and we can also go to the search function as well. But searching itself comes under 
analyzing the user's ability to search and select specific videos to watch okay so if i know a specific movie i want to watch i'll go to the search app it will do a search for the keywords i have typed into the search text box and then retrieve movies that have that similar search name okay so that is analyzing there then we have storing and retrieving. Now we have databases, obviously, where all the uh, video data is stored. And, and that's obviously what's being referenced when I do a search, but also the physical storage of all these videos on hard drives, on servers at Netflix, okay? All these movies need to be stored somewhere. And so that when I do request to watch this movie, it needs to be retrieved from those servers so that it can be streamed to my device that I wanna watch it on. So obviously storage and retrieval is massive in this area. With processing, a big part of that would be the compression of data. The whole big thing that we love about Netflix is that we start watching these movies instantly. So there needs to be compression as the data is being transferred, but then also the streaming and buffering of the video data. These are large file sizes. On some of your TVs, you're watching these at a 4K quality, okay, which are mammoth amounts of file sizes for these video files that have audio in them. Okay, so the compression, the streaming, and the buffering of this so that it can be watched almost instantly is in a uh, really technical process that obviously we're not going to go into now, but something we do have to acknowledge. Transmitting and receiving obviously is a big factor of this too, because we are getting it from our server sent to our device. Okay, so the transmission of data via wired and wireless networks. Okay, so if it's your home Wi-Fi, you're using um, a wireless network, but if you are physically connected via Ethernet to your modem, okay, and then your modem may be connected to fiber optics to your actual uh, telecommunications network in your area. Okay, that is a combination of wired and wireless networks there that allow systems like this to run. And then finally, Finally is displaying the presentation of audio and video in a variety of resolutions pending your device. As I mentioned before, the resolution of your phone is a different to the resolution of your TV and is diff uh, different once again to the resolution of your computer. Okay, and the Netflix optimizes the resolution okay, to your specific device based on what it can detect, which is once again a good feat of the actual app. So they are the information processes now. Now let's look at what's interacting with these information processes. So firstly is the participants, okay? And so what type of participants are a part of the system? What people are assisting and making this system run? Well, firstly, there's the data database administrators, okay? They are putting in all the movie details and monitoring and updating the movie details within Netflix's database on movies. There's also would be another database entity set up for customers. You have to have an account to use Netflix, okay? So they'd make sure that people have paid their accounts, they have all their customer details, and also they, um, it automates, but it tracks what movies people are watching and then recommends movies they watch. And you'd see that come up on your Netflix menus, uh, suggested movies you may like. That's from those two sub entities acting with each other. We'd also have some sort of movie upload team. The people that need to put these movies onto Netflix's servers so that they can be streamed, okay? And that would be a process in itself. And these people need to make sure of the integrity of movies and things are working correctly as well. And then finally, with the overall system, we need to have technical support. People who either need to help users and they can call so that users can um, ask for help, as well as technical support for the people that work at Netflix, okay? If something goes down, if a server goes down, the people need to repair the actual hardware and software so that Netflix can keep running as a business and the technical components are working well. In the areas of data and information, okay, with data would be the use of text and voice, okay? Um, some of you have the fancy uh, remotes where you can actually talk into your remote, okay, and it will allow uh, Netflix to do a search or find a movie for you, but other people would be you putting in text with their keyboards or their touchpads, okay? So that's all the data going into the system, okay, and allowing you to select movies when you do use your remotes in that aspect. The information coming out is obviously the streamed audio and video. On the end where you're actually watching these TV shows or movies and you're seeing the picture, uh, coming up on screen and you're hearing the audio coming out of the TV or your mobile phone speakers. Okay, that is the output of the system, which is the information being streamed to you almost instantly from Netflix's servers. And then the final area we'll look at is the information technology. So the hardware we'd have, as we've emphasized many times before, would be hard disk drives stored on servers, which store all the movies on them, okay? As well as um, the devices that the user is using on their end, okay? So the tablets, the computers, okay? And their monitors and your TV, which is also classified as a monitor, okay? And then transmission hardware, which allows for the stream data to be sent from the servers to that device, okay? And once again, there'd be many, much more hardware as well as software as we're gonna look at 
in a sec that would be using this type of system. But once again, this is just an introduction. Okay, and then finally is the software. As mentioned, the database that stores all the movie and customer details, that'd be software you need. You need some sort of database management system governing over that. Also the NOS, which stands for Network Operating System, because Netflix obviously is a, a part of a larger network. Okay, so the, um, we'd obviously have some sort of server set up for the network operating system so that it can run on a network. And then finally, a very important one for the user to have, if they do have it on an app, is the Netflix app. So they can watch the actual movies, they can access and search for the movies they want to watch. So I hope this video has been a good introduction and a great example of how the information systems in context works using an example such as Netflix okay, that you are familiar with. I hope that all these things kind of ticked off in your head that you can actually understand these different parts of the Netflix information system and you can visualize how these things work. So I hope this has given you a bit of a better understanding of what an information system is and its context.